How y'all doing today? Y'all want to stand out and say, rise. Well, you'll rise one day. How many visions we got in the house today? So, our family, we all the same with family? That's right. <laughs> I wonder why I'm so quiet. Sometimes you just have to be quiet. But the Holy Ghost just to speak through you. Yes, sir. Somebody's carrying a battle this morning. You know it's not yours. It's not yours. You don't got to carry it. You don't got to stress over it. You know, if we go into this circus, and I've said that to Alice more and just, just said, you know, just, to me, there's a difference in praise. Difference in worship. You know, we praise God for the goodness that He shows us each and every day of our life. But to worship is totally different. And when you worship, His presence comes down and He's standing with you. Whatever struggles you go with. You know, the last church that I we served at, they had carpet in, in place, but right up in the front, there was one little spot that they had the unlayment, the cushion. Nudge me. And I start like from that bench. And I slowly creep up. And I slowly creep up. But when I crossed over to that cushion, I crossed over. I crossed over to the presence of God. I stepped over into his area. So many times I used to stay back. But that one time I crossed over into his area. And his presence just fell upon me. Like something I've never experienced in my life. That anointed veil, that love that some of us are still looking for. It's there when you cross over to his presence. Y'all can wonder, well, where's God at? He's right where you left him. Yes, that's right. Come on, Russell. And if you've turned away or if you backed away, he's still right there where you left him. Come on. Yes. And all he's asking you to do is to come. Come into my presence. Seek me with you. Seek me. And He will restore you. Whatever you lost, He'll restore it. In peace, whatever hurt you're carrying, whatever burden you're carrying, it's not yours. We walk through this life carrying something that's not even ours to carry. That He, he took care of a long time ago. You know, I still struggle with these ears feeling like I'm in a cocoon. Well, I was up on the river in heaven. I sound arrogant or whatever you want to say it, but I demanded it to be fixed. Yes, that's right. And you know why I demanded it? Because 
because his word said it. His word said I was. He didn't say am I. He said I was. But I've got to believe it. And I've got to have the faith to receive it. Because if I don't, I'm never going to get it. But that goes not just for healing. That goes for anything else that y'all struggle with. We got to believe it. Because he gives us life to have it more abundant, to have peace, to have joy, to have everlasting. He didn't, he didn't come down here and cause problems for us. So this morning, get out of your comfort zone. Come on, brother. Because if you don't get out of your comfort zone, you're not going to get what God wants for you. Amen. He wants your presence. He wants to be in your presence. He wants to fix what you can't fix. Worship Him. Don't praise. Worship Him. Let's go, Lord, and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning, Lord, we just desire Your presence in our lives. And we desire to be in your presence. We desire, Father God, that the burdens will be lifted off our shoulder. But we know, Lord, that we've got to submit to you and be obedient to give it to you. We know not when our time will be called. We don't know what hour you will say come home but Lord I just pray for those that are going through a battle this morning Lord God that you just touch their life and that when they step out of that comfort zone that they'll feel that chain that ball fall from their shoulders and they will feel the joy and the peace you promised. They'll feel that love overwhelm them. Like, a, like something they've never ever felt in their life. Because we know, Lord, you are loving God. You desire us. Lord, help us heart, Father God, desire you more of you. It's just as a little children that climb up in their parents' lap to seek you. That attention, Lord God, let our hearts, Father, be, be tugged at and pulled toward you that we might pull, just come up in your lap and feel the love that you have for us. joy than to know that the Lord loves you. Lord, I pray for this praise team, Lord, as, as we lift up your name. I pray, Lord, that they get out of their comfort zone and not go through the same song or way of delivering it, but to work to step out into the unknown and to let your glory be shown in this house this morning. Paul, I pray for the lost. I pray for the hurting. I pray for the rejected, Lord God. I pray for this nation, Lord God, that they will return back to you, Lord. You're the only one that can fix any of this mess that's going to happen, even in our own lives. Lord, I pray for our pastor. As he brings forth the word, Lord God, I let it be stern and strong. Let it be from your heart, Lord.
Lord, we just praise you. We thank you. And we give you all the glory. Which in Jesus' name we pray. came ready to worship this morning. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I came into this house expecting God to do something this morning. And if you came with expectant hearts, then I know God's going to show up. So let's let our worship match our hearts this morning. Y'all worship us.
can go. So lay the troubles down in your soul. I know a place where a sea flows. Take the stains, make some wider than stones.
future praise team. Amen. Hey, I'm just going to go ahead and let them run with it. I tell you what, uh, they do an awesome job. And uh, I love to see their enthusiasm, you know, when, when they're singing, you know, how, it, how excited they are to, uh, to be singing and, and worshiping and everything. And, uh, and I tell you what, Peru, Peru got excited down here too. I thought he was about to run the aisles. And uh, man, I was starting to get excited. Amen. Uh, we do have several announcements that we want to go over here. Um, uh, we've been announcing this for a couple weeks, but uh, if anybody didn't get back with me, we are going to have a membership class uh, following service this morning for anybody who's interested in becoming a member of Mount Pleasant. Um, also, Community Day is Saturday, August the 5th at Bryan Park, and uh, we'll have a tent uh, out there handing out uh, notebooks, and uh, we'll have a dump tank as well, and uh, also our praise team will be singing, and uh, that begins at 6.30 that evening at uh, Bryan Park. Um, so... Uh, uh, we uh, want you to come out, you know, if you've got a Mount Pleasant shirt, you know, wear it, come out and, uh, and join us. And it's always a, a good time. So um, it's good to be out into the community and so they can see, you know, that, uh, you know, that there's a church here at Mount Pleasant that, that is here for them and, uh, and wants to welcome them in. So also our back to school Sunday is going to be Sunday, August the 6th. And uh, we'll be praying over our students, teachers and schools. And uh, we want all of the students to bring their book bags that Sunday. Um, you don't have to have books in them, but bring your book bag. And what we're going to do is we're going to line them up across the altar. And we're going to anoint them and pray over them. Um, and uh, like I said, we're going to cover also all of our, our teachers and any faculty and staff and everything. And uh, our families. You know, so many times we you know forget about you know the families. And uh, I know school is a is a big transition sometimes. Uh, sometimes there's there's kids that, that you know that this is their first time going to school, and uh, I know that that can be you know sometimes difficult for the the moms and the dads out there. So so we want to cover our families in prayer as well. So um, the ladies ministry will be hosting their woman to woman conference on Saturday, August the 26th, uh, here at Mount Pleasant. Uh, we're extremely excited about that, and uh, we do have um, the uh, registration all set to go for that. And so, uh, Sister Amanda, uh, I'm sure she'll be sending it out um, on the, the ladies' ministry page and, and the Facebook Messenger or something like that. So keep an eye out for that. I'll also go and share that on our main church page. And uh, registration is really easy. Um, it's just some basic information. But we do want everybody that uh, is planning on coming to RSVP, um, even our Mount Pleasant ladies, because we want to make sure we have a count of how many people are going to be here, so we we know who to who and how many to prepare for. So, um, also uh, we're going to be having a competition uh, to see which Sunday school class can bring the most non-perishable food items. Um, that's going to start next Sunday, July the thirtieth, and it's going to run through Wednesday, August the twenty-third. And all these donations uh, will go to the Kaya House Outreach Ministry. And um, the winning class is going to receive a pizza and pool party. And we're going to have that at, on Sunday, September the 3rd, following service. Um, and that will actually be at, uh, at our house. So um, so we're looking forward to that. And um, when you go out to the store, just keep that in mind. Maybe grab a couple of items. And um, if you don't have a child that's in a Sunday school class, um, if you want to give towards a particular class, that's fine as well. So, um, and I know that uh, Sister Becky and Sister Jill are going to be working on a list of items um, that you know they're kind of looking for, and so we'll make sure that that's posted as well, so that information's out there for everybody. So, um, we can have a couple of ushers come down front this morning, and we're going to go over our prayer request list here. Uh, we want to remember Kate Williams, Michelle Stowe, Diane Br Brundage, Kevin Gordon. Rebecca Caldwell, Mark Tucker, Tammy Cruz, Stephanie Crow, Laura Grinder, Jackson Brothers, Heather LaFlam, Linda George, James Shelton, Wade Grizzle, Rebecca Baskins, Claire Bingham, and Chris Yarberg. All, all these people are battling cancer, so please pray for them and their families. And um, I will say this, we've been praying for, for Sister Candace Hammond, and, um, and she went through... Um, some treatment and I uh, went and had a scan this past week and 
cancer's gone. And uh, we thank God for that. So we give him the praise. Tom C. writes in need of a lung transplant. Uh, we want to continue to remember my mom, Lane Taylor. She's with us this morning. Um, but she's uh, she's doing a lot better than she was the past two weeks. So we're thankful that she's here with us this morning. If you don't mind, continue to remember her in your prayers, though, because she's still she's still on the uphill climb. So, um, also, Ann Epps is recovering from surgery as well from a broken hip. So remember her. Brian Whitley uh, broke his neck and needs healing in his body. Uh, Larry Monday he fell last week and he is uh, still actually in the hospital and he's going to be going for physical therapy following that. So pray for him. Um, also, uh, Tashina Miller, uh, pray for covering over her family. Uh, Morgan Price, pray that the uh, baby stays healthy and, and that it stays inside of her as long as possible. Um, and then we want to remember uh, Amber Tiller. Uh, Amber tested positive for COVID last week. Also remember Sister Ginger because she's got a lot going on with, with her dad being in the hospital and Amber having COVID. So remember their family and your prayers. Um, we want to remember Brother Emmett Compton. Thankful he's able to be with us this morning, but I know he's been battling some back pain and, and brother it's good to see you back there this morning thank you for being here continue to keep him in your prayers though and then uh mike and marie fowler we want to remember them mike is going to be having knee replacement surgery and uh there's some some kind of risk and things that you know might take place during the surgery from previous medical concerns so please pray for covering over mike and marie fowler so and their family um, does anybody have a spoken prayer request on my left hand side this morning? Anybody on my right hand side this morning? Anybody on the platform? All right, let's all stand. Yes. Yes, uh, remember Charlotte Hart, if you don't mind. That's uh, that's my great aunt. So, if uh, anybody has a uh, unspoken prayer request, if you'll raise an uplifted hand, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we just again thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. God, I pray that right now, as these names, dear Lord, have been read out and mentioned, dear Lord, and, and God, I pray that that you would just begin to move, dear Lord, in these situations and circumstances. God, I pray that you would just have your way. And that your will would be done, dear Lord. God, I pray that you would just give us, dear Lord, those words, dear Lord, that we can speak peace and encouragement into each and every one of these names that are mentioned, dear God. Jesus, we know that you're mindful of it, dear Lord. God, I pray for, for healing, dear Lord. I pray for deliverance, dear God. Jesus, we know that you can do it, and we know that you will. God, I pray right now that you would just continue to bless in the remainder of this service, God. Jesus, anoint this worship as it goes forth toward you. And God, I pray, dear Lord, that you would just bless our tithes and offerings this morning. God, I pray that you would let us give with cheerful hearts and take it, break it, bless it, multiply it, and give us the wisdom and knowledge to use it for the best of your kingdom here at Mount Pleasant. And God, we give you all the praise you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
times when we uh, when we face things in life, you know, a lot of times we'll we'll get to a certain situation or you know a certain circumstance, and you know sometimes we just don't even have the words. Sometimes we can't find the words within us, and uh, we're just lost. And I want you to know that there's been so many times, even in, in, in my life, that that I've been in that same situation to where I don't know what to say or, or what to do. And all I can do is just call on Jesus. But if you can do that, that's really all you need. Because when you take it to Jesus, when you begin to speak Jesus over your situations, over your families, over your circumstances, that's when true, true healing and change can take place. And I don't know what you're facing this morning. I don't know what you came in here with this morning. I don't know if you got a heavy heart. You know, I, I don't know that if you feel like you're about to, you know, fall apart or, or that you're facing brokenness or anxiety or depression, whatever it is that you've got going on this morning. I will say this, I ask you to, as we go through this song and we worship, to lift your hands and to speak Jesus over it and give it to Him this morning. Because He's the one that can take it and He can do something beautiful with it this morning. Y'all worship with us.
everybody doing this morning? Good. If you're not doing good, you're in the right place. Amen. You're in a place for encouragement. You're in a place for support. You're in a place of restoration. You're in a place where broken pieces can be mended back together. Amen. And that's in the presence of God. You know, I, I began to think as we were as we were singing that that song right there, Brother Wesley, do you mind going back to that bridge? I was I was looking at something and thinking about something, and and this is just this is just something like I said that came across my mind, and um, and it's that word shout right there, the word shout, and you know I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty loud person. I think it's in part with the mitch because my hearing is not so great either and my wife tells me that I need hearing aids and uh, I told her that she that was a lie from the devil but she's probably right so a lot of times I talk loud anyways but you know there are only certain times in my life that I actually shout I shout when I'm at a football game on Friday night or Sunday, or excuse me, a Saturday. Yes. You know, one of the two, if something great happens, I shout. Yes. Same thing if something bad happens. Yes. I shout. If I get hurt, I shout. If I'm at my wit's end and I don't know what else to do about something, maybe I start to get frustrated. I shout. And I begin to think about, you know, how many times when we experience all those different things in our life do we shout? But when it comes to our spiritual well-being, we just let things go and we just bomb it all up inside and we say, you know what? You know, I'm just going to leave this down here because I don't want anybody else to know that I'm struggling. I don't want anybody else to know that I'm hurting. And sometimes we even get to the point where we say, I don't want anybody to know that, that I'm really excited because I don't want to make them feel bad. I want you to know that if God's blessed you, you need to give Him some praise. Amen. You need to shout to Him. If you're hurting and struggling and feeling just completely empty and broken inside, you need to shout to Him. Because He's all-knowing. And he's the only one that can take our situation and make it better again. He can make it like new, better than new. And then once he does that, we should shout again. See, I begin to think about that verse right there. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And we're going to talk a little bit about the mountains this morning. But it not only says shout Jesus from the mountains because when we're in the mountains, normally, you know, you're thinking about you're at the top of that mountain. Everybody ever, anybody ever went to Stone Mountain or, or hiked up any other mountain before by a show of hands? I know y'all will be surprised. I don't want anybody to fall out this morning, but I have hiked up to the top of Stone Mountain. All right. It didn't fall. It was able to hold me. Okay. I promise. It's still there. And I didn't die on the way up. So that's a good thing. But when we got up there, has anybody ever, you know, once they reached a place of elevation like that, you just get up there and you just, ah! Like, you know, I'm the king of the world. You know, something like that. I begin to think about, you know, we shout during times like that. But it also says that we should shout Jesus in the streets. Shout Jesus in the darkness. Shout Jesus over whatever your enemy is, and shout Jesus for your family. Yes. See, when I really care about something, like my well-being, I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be stuck with needles or anything like that. You know, my family, I love my family. I care about it. And when stuff happens, that's when I shout. I love my kids dearly. When they do something that I told them not to do, I get angry and I shout at them, right? But it's because I care about them. See, if I didn't care about them, I could just care less. You know, they didn't listen to me. Oh well, whatever. You know, I'll just go my separate way. And you know, they ain't my kids. I ain't worried about it. 
But when it's my kids and I care about them so much, I want to see them raised up to be something great. And that's why I shout. See, we're God's children in this place this morning. And just as I shout at my kids when something's going on, when they've got something going on, they begin to shout at me. If they need help, they say, Daddy. And they yell it. They'll yell it across the yard, across the house, across the church, wherever it is. They'll yell out to Daddy or Mama because they need, they need help. I want you to know this morning, if you're struggling with anything in this house this morning, that you've got a father that he's listening for your cry. He's listening for your shout this morning. And he'll hear it. And he'll be mindful of it. Amen. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap off for a praise this morning. If you got your Bibles, uh, I'd like you to turn with me to Psalm 24. And if y'all don't mind just standing for the initial reading of God's Word, I, I appreciate that. Amen. We do have some guests in the house this morning. And uh, let's give our guests a hand this morning. Maybe you feel welcome. Amen. We uh as we say all the time, and I know our, our people are probably sick of hearing this. I hope not. But welcome home to Mount Pleasant. We want this to be a place where you can come and, and you can be a part of this family, but you know, a part of something bigger than us. And that's God's kingdom. Amen. Bigger than just Mount Pleasant. All right, let's get in the word this morning. Psalms 24, and I'm going to start reading with verse 3. Now, I'm going to read out of the NLT. Uh, for this this passage um, so it might read a little bit different in your Bible but just bear with me and it should be on the screen there but Psalms 24 and 3 it says who may climb the mountain of the Lord who may stand in his holy place only those whose hands and hearts are pure who do not worship idols and never tell lies they will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Who may climb the mountain? Who may stand in the presence? It says here, these questions are asked by David, who's writing this, but the answer is right here in verse 4. It says, only those whose hands and hearts are pure who do not worship idols and never tell lies. See, the thing is, is each and every one of us, whether we know it or not, we've got mountains in our lives. See, mountains aren't something new and they're not going away. I promise you that. You know, it says in our word that, that there's always going to be hills and valleys, right? Ups and downs, twists and turns. And I want to remind us that Jesus, when he was talking in Matthew 17, he says, if you have the faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. How many of y'all believe that this morning? Amen. How many of y'all have the faith to speak to a mountain and the mountain to be moved? Amen. How many of y'all have the faith that if the mountain's not moved, that maybe you understand that that mountain is not meant to move, but God put that mountain there to see if you've got enough faith and endurance to climb that mountain. This morning, we're going to talk about the climb. The climb. Brother Eric, do you mind saying a prayer of the message this morning? Lord, we love you this morning. We praise you. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here to this. Lord, I pray that uh, you be with Brother Levi this morning, Lord, as he brings the word. Lord, I pray that you just uh, put it in his heart, Lord, put it in his mouth, what he would speak, Lord, and just let it be clear and let everybody understand the message, Lord. We'll make sure that you get all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the house this morning. See, there's, there's certain mountains that 
sometimes are in our path or in our walk with God that God has put there Himself. And you can sit there and, and you can try and wish that that mountain wasn't in front of you, you know, all you want to. But I want you to know that if, if God put it there, then it's there for a purpose. Because it's during times of, of testing that we build character, that we build endurance. And you know, it says in my word that, that this race that, that, that we are all running, this Christian race, or this Christian walk that, that we're all going down, it says that it's not the fastest. It's not the fastest, but it's he who endures till the end. He endures to the end will be the one that makes it. And God wants to know if you've got the endurance, if you've got it within you in order to come from within yourself and bring yourself up and say, okay, I can do this. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But I'm going to do it. And I know that God's going to be right there with me every step of the way. See, each and every one of us, we have these kind of mountains in our life as well. You know, there, there are things that, that we pray over and that, that God will move. But this is how God tests us. And we've got to understand that the test isn't to hurt you. It's not to harm you. But it's to see how faithful are you. How faithful are you for what God has told you to do? You know, I begin to think about you know, what we just talked about, that endurance, and that it's, it's not the fastest. And we talked about it a couple of weeks ago in one of our, my sermons on Wednesday night that you know, there's that story of the tortoise and the hare. And, and I'm sure all of us have probably heard this before. And the hare just takes off running really, really fast. And he gets to a point where he's got so much of a lead that he begins to rest. And he says, you know what? You know, I've got this. I'm good. But that tortoise who ends up winning the race, he might not have been the fastest, but he was consistent. And he never stopped. And he kept going. See, we've got to stop having this Ricky Bobby mentality when it comes to the church, when it comes to our spiritual relationship with God. It ain't if if you ain't first or last. You know, because it actually says the opposite in my Bible. It says that the last shall be first. And the first shall receive a crown. Amen. Thank God, because I'm not very fast. Unless I'm in my truck. But if we will be consistent in everything we do, and not just consistent, but persistent, yes. if we'll give it everything that we've got, then I know that God will bring us through it. See, when we talk about climbing a mountain, that looks pretty rough, doesn't it? Man, I'm getting tired just looking at that. Honestly. See, that would be a very tough mountain to climb. And there's some jagged edges and things like that. I'm sure there's some loose rocks. I mean, it would, it would be scary. But can you imagine climbing something like that? Everything that you would have to go through, the elements, the animals, the environment, everything around you, and then you reach the top. How good that would feel? To look over everything and say, hey, I made it. I'm here. You see, it's amazing when you when you do something like that. But in order to climb that mountain, it has to be something that's chosen from you. Because nobody can climb the mountain for you. Nobody can can make the decision, hey, I'm going to do this. It's got to come from you. It's your choice. 
See, we serve a God of free will. He's not going to make you worship Him while we're down here on earth. See, He's given us the opportunity to worship Him now. He's given us this chance to come into this place and to lift our hands and lift our voices to Him. But there's going to come a time to where we don't have a choice. It says that when we stand before Him, it says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that He's Lord. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't want Him to make me have to worship them because when I stand before Him, I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be trembling. I might be trembling because I'm in the presence of God and I'm really excited, but I want to run to Him and fall on my knees and say, thank you, Jesus. But see, the ones that wouldn't praise Him and worship Him down here, they're going to be made to. And they'll have to confirm that He is the Lord. Climbing a mountain's tough. Even the little mountain, stone mountain that I climbed, it was tough. It was hard. And I want to talk to you this morning just briefly about three different types of people when it comes to mountains. There's quitters, there's campers, and there's climbers. Now what I want you to do during this message is I want you to self-examine your own situation. And I want you to ask yourself, am I a quitter? Am I a camper? Or am I a climber? And I'm going to be honest with you this morning. There's been times in my life that I've been every single one of these yes, sir. in certain situations. There's been times where I, you know, I, I had something in front of me. I had, you know, dreams and aspirations and goals. And I got to going a little bit and the going got tough. And I said, you know what? This is just too much. I'm going to quit. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I'm just going to quit and I'm going to go back to what I was doing. Yes, sir. See, God doesn't want you to quit so easily. You know, I begin to think about something I heard as a, a young man, and I can't remember who I heard this from, but, you know, anything worth having is worth working for. And everything that we've got, we've had to work for and earn, right? Now, you might say, well, you know, there's some stuff that I inherited. Well, that means that somebody worked for it so that you could have it. But when we begin to talk about our faith, see, faith can be passed down from generation to generation. And I want to pass down my faith to my children, Brother Mitch. But at the end of the day, I can pass down my faith and try to do you know, this now all I want to, but unless they decide to live for God themselves, they're going to be lost. We've got work that needs to be done. And I will tell you this, that it's so easy in the time that we live in, we've made quitting just such an easy option. We, we've made quitting, you know, just so convenient, right? I don't know about y'all, but I came from a household to where if I started something, my parents made sure that I saw it through. And I wasn't allowed to quit. But we, we live in a time nowadays to where you know, people just quit things so easily. And, and in fact, I, I feel like, and I'm going to be real with you, I feel like it all starts at home because the parents allow it. And this didn't start just a year ago. I feel like it actually started with my generation. That somewhere along those lines, we just, we just made the option of quitting just, you know, hey, you know, if it's tough, just don't worry about it. Just you don't, you don't have to do it anymore. Next thing you know, you've got people quitting on their education. You've got people quitting on their husbands and wives, quitting on their children and just walking away. And we wonder why we're in the state that we're in. Why there's so many broken families around. 
You know, I, I don't want to have to worry about my responsibilities. I'm just going to quit worrying about my responsibilities. And, you know, I'm just going to do whatever makes me feel good. And I'm going to, you know, just drink this or, you know, smoke this or shoot up this or, or go sleep with this person or, you know, do whatever I want to. See, God, God has blessings that He wants to bestow upon us, but He wants to know. He wants to know that deep down inside of us, do we want to receive these blessings? Because if, if we've got this mentality that we can quit and that God's still going to bless us, then we've got the wrong mindset. We've got the wrong mindset. God's looking for people that will get out there and work. That will get out there and do the, the will of God and grow the kingdom of God. Work's tough sometimes, right? How many of y'all just wake up? How many of y'all tomorrow morning, on, on Monday morning, you're going to wake up and be like, man, I can't, go to, I can't wait to go to work. This is going to be so much fun. You know, I'm glad that I had to wake up at 6, you know. I, you know, I, I'm glad that I have to fight this traffic to get into Athens now because it's so overpopulated. I'm glad that when I get to work, you know, at 7 o'clock, that I have to go to a meeting to start my day at 7.15. And then all of a sudden, we've already got customers lined up down the, you know, the road. And, you know, we've got to put on our happy, smiley face. And, you know, anybody else have stuff like this in their life? Yes, sir. See, when we, when we view these things, see, it's tough. But we've got to understand that so many times we view that as an obstacle. Aaron, you know what I'm talking about? Aaron works with, with me, so she knows exactly what it's like. I expected her to say amen and start running off, but um, it didn't work out the way that I thought it was going to. It's probably because she's so tired from work. Um, but no, I mean, we, we view these things as obstacles. But if we would change our mindset, and I know I'm going to sound like Steve Middlebrooks here for a second, Aaron. I'm going to sound like my owner. But if we would change our mindset and say, hey, you know, this isn't an obstacle, this is an opportunity. And that there's somebody out there that would do everything to trade positions with you. That they would love to have a job. They'd love to have a bed to wake up to at 6 o'clock in the morning. They'd love to have a car to get into and, and go to work. But yet we just complain and complain and complain. See, there's opportunities out there if we'll see them as opportunities. And if we'll start looking at our mountains like that, hey, this isn't an obstacle. This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to see not only what I'm made of, but this is an opportunity for me to climb this mountain, get to the top, and show people, hey, this is how good God is. This is what God can do through somebody as simple as is me. Because see, God, He doesn't want us to just live good lives. He doesn't want us to just live just lives like you said earlier, brother bitch. But He He died so that we can have life and life more abundantly. He wants you to have that more abundantly life. And in order to have a more abundantly life, you've got to be willing to climb. He ain't looking for quitters. Revelations 3, 15 through 16, it says, I know your works. That you are neither hot, excuse me, cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I want you to know that God looks at people that, that aren't willing to do the work and it just makes him sick. It makes him sick. I'm pretty sure there's nobody in here that enjoys throwing up, right? If you do. We're going to have an altar call here in a second. I'm going to lay hands on you because you might have some kind of demon inside of you. I cannot stand throwing up. Casey hates it even worse than I do because she's not good at it. I don't know if throwing up is a skill, but if it is, she did not get that skill. Every time she throws up, it's like this huge you know, ordeal, and I'm like, oh, my God, here we go. I'm being serious, man. It's crazy. She threw up one time so hard and like she kind of tried to hold it in or something. 
that she hemorrhaged and her eyes turned red. Like the white parts. She looked like Darth Maul on Star Wars. If anybody knows who that is, it was crazy. I was like, I don't know if we need to go to church or anywhere else like that because somebody's going to be trying to lay hands on you and pray for you. You know, none of us enjoy throwing up. I, even like, you know, this little like acid reflux I have, and that, to me that's the worst. I, I would rather just, you know, it come up out of me. But, but when it comes up and hits my throat and it goes back down and then it's just burning like this, I can't stand that. I can't stand it. How sad is it to think that sometimes God looks it up and he wants to just vomit us out of his mouth and be like, you know what, I just want to get rid of these folks. I don't want God to look at me and ever think that. I don't want him to look at you and ever think that. This is why we, we can't be quitters. We can't be lukewarm. It's important that, that we surround ourselves by people that, that want to help us and that they want to succeed with us. See, I'll tell you this morning, if you hang around quitters, then that's what you're going to do as well. You'll quit. But if you hang around people that are driven, that have purpose, that have a plan, and they're willing to do anything that they have to in order to climb on top of that mountain, then you know what? Those people will help you along as well. They'll help you along. It says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, it says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? See, in, in y'all's Bibles right there, Mitch, in your Bible it says don't be unequally yoked, right? See, we've got to understand that that there, there has to be balance in our lives. But when you've got one person trying to live one way and another person trying to live another under the same roof, at some point in time, you may think, hey, you know, this is, this is working, this is going to be okay. At some point in time, it's not. It's going to crash. There's going to be a head-on collision at some point or another. See, God wants us to be in this together. He wants us to be in in this with each other and as a church family who wants us to, to help one another to pray with one another that, that when one of us struggles we all struggle when one of us rejoices we all rejoice when we see somebody else that you know that, that falls we go and help them back up and we say hey you know I know that my plate pace was a little faster than yours right now but I saw that you you know have fallen here so I'm going to come pick you up and I'll walk with you you can just move at my pace and we'll go together See, that's what God wants. And you might say, well, you know, what if I what if I go and, you know, and I go and get them and they keep me from getting to the top of the mountain? I mentioned this Wednesday night. That's why you don't go down there and stay with them. Because you've got certain people that have fallen, that have went on the climb, and they got to a certain point and they said, you know what? Maybe they didn't even fall. Maybe they just, you know, got comfortable. And they said, you know what? I'm just going to camp out here for a second. See, these are the campers. These are the people that, that they had good intentions, but they get halfway up the mountain and they say, well, you know what? This is good enough. God didn't call us to live good enough lives. He didn't want us to have good lives. He wanted us to have great lives. He wanted us to have great blessings. He wanted us to be extraordinary. Not just ordinary, but extraordinary. I preached a message one time. Is that a little bit of extra? That's Jesus. Because Jesus can take the ordinary and do something extraordinary with it. See, when you go back down to help somebody else, don't camp out with them. Don't stay there with them. If they don't want to leave that place, you say, you know, okay. Well, I'm going to keep on going. See, what, what happens is that different people coming up that mountain You'll not only have a camper, but other people will come up and they'll see those people camping and they'll be like, hey, we're just going to camp out here too. And the next thing you know, you got a whole campsite, a campground, right? 
I want you to know this morning that, and I'm just going to be very real with you right now. Matt, you like football, right? I'm about to have some like Kirby Smart, Nick Saban mentality this morning. I will not be satisfied with what has happened at this church over the years that I've been here. I want more. I want more. And I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to go through the struggles because there's times that it's going to be really hard. There's times it's going to be frustrating. But I'm going to keep on climbing until God has taken us to the top of that mountain. Amen. So you want to talk about obstacle and opportunity. You want to talk about promises and goals and dreams and all these things. See, I remember when the children of Israel, when they were wandering around in the wilderness, and they finally got right there on the cusp of that promised land. And they sent all those spies out. And the 12 come back, and they all had the same story. They all saw the same thing, but only two of them said, Hey, God's promised us this. Let's go take it. See, only two of them saw the opportunity. The rest of them saw the obstacles. All they could see was the negative. And I want you to know this morning that you might not say, well, hey, you know, I'm not, you know, moving into a promised land or anything like that. And yeah, maybe that's true. Maybe you don't actually have an actual land, you know, that God wants you to move to. But I want you to know this morning that God has given this church some promised land. And I want to break ground on it one day. And I want to see God use it do something amazing with it. And we can look at all these things that are tough right now, and we can say, hey, how do we get from here to there? We keep on climbing. We don't become satisfied with what God is doing right now, but we want more. We desire more. See, Jesus, he had that same kind of mentality that he wanted more for people. He didn't want more for himself. He didn't want to be magnified here on this earth. He, didn't, he wasn't worried about the titles, the fame, riches, anything like that. He was here to do a work. In Matthew 5 and 1, and this is in the message version of the Bible, it says, when Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving in a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. Jesus wants to know, hey, are you willing to go up this mountain with me? Because if you're willing to, you can come with me. And I've got things that I want to show you. I've got things that I want to give you. But I love here that it says in this passage, it says, those who were apprenticed to him, the committed. Are you committed to what God wants to do in your life. And it's more than just saying you're committed. It's showing that you're committed. It's going out every day and, and doing the things that we're supposed to do. It's you know going and reaching the lost. Encouraging the, the people that are struggling. God's called us to be more than campers. I used to, I haven't went camping in a long time, but I used to enjoy going camping. Probably not so much anymore, maybe, you know. It'd be kind of crazy with a couple of kids. and I'd be one of those, I'd be like Brother Julio back here, you know. I, I ain't taking no tent, you know. I'm taking me like a, you know, a pull behind camper or something like that. You know, we're going to have like some AC and different things like that, you know. You know, you, you get on that, you get in that tent and you know you sleep on that hard ground and gosh you wake up the next morning and don't even feel like you can walk or God, it just hurts because you know I'm getting old. How many times have you seen stories or, or movies or shows to where somebody has slept on something hard for so long that it has become their comfort zone? I can't remember what I was watching the other day but this guy had slept on a concrete floor for so long that he finally made it back home and he tried to sleep in his bed and he couldn't because it, it didn't feel right to him. So he slept on the floor. See, I don't want to be satisfied. I don't want to become comfortable sleeping on the floor. 
I don't want you and your family and your kids to become comfortable right where you're at. But I want you to know that God wants more for you. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul tells us that after Jesus had been crucified, He had risen, that He appeared before the disciples, and it says that, that He was seen by around 500 people after being risen. 500 people saw him. Think about that. Now, I don't know about you, but if I believed in Jesus, and if I saw this guy that had risen from the dead, that said that he was going to rise from the dead, I'd probably believe what he had to tell me. I'd probably listen to it, I would think. I'd be a little freaked out at first. I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> he did it. But then I'd be amazed. I'd be like, you know, whatever this guy's got going on, he's, he's got something special. And one of the saddest things that I can think about in the Bible is that these 500 people saw him and, and Jesus said in Luke 24 and 49, it says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. He gave a specific example. He was very detailed. He said, hey, go here, and I've got a blessing for you. And one of the saddest things is that out of those 500 people, that only 120 made it into that upper room. Only 120 people received the blessing that God had for them. But notice who received it. It was the ones that were obedient and that they were willing to climb. See, you probably had a bunch of these people that if they quit right there on the on the spot, and you might say, why, you know, why would they have quit, Levi? You know, because it was going to be a tough climb. Christians were being killed in Jerusalem because of their faith. Yes, there was a mountain to climb. There were risks that were going to be taken by going to Jerusalem and waiting. So yes, there were people that quit. There were probably people that made the journey and got right outside Jerusalem and they said, you know what? We can't do it. You know, we're just going to camp out here and, you know, you know, maybe we'll get a little portion of it right here. I want you to know the blessing ain't found halfway up the mountain. It's found at the top of the mountain. The blessing's found in the upper room. And see, so you had 120 people that were willing to climb up those stairs into that upper room. And they received that gift of the Holy Ghost. They received what God had promised. And it says in Acts 2 and 37, after it had become so much that the room couldn't contain it anymore, that they spilled out into the streets. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, there was a group of people that saw what was going on and said, hey, I want that too. How do I get this? I want you to know when you're climbing up that mountain, there might be some people that say, hey, I want to go with you. How, how can I do this? How are you doing this? It's up to us to minister to them, encourage and support them, and show them the way. Because see, it's not just our generation, but it's the generation after us and after them. This is what Peter talks about here. It says, And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. See, God wants to do a great work in our lives. 
But we've got to understand that the greatest gifts that he can ever give us are found on top of that mountain. See, when Jesus went up on top of the mountain and he took his inner circle with him, it doesn't say that they got halfway up there and then that's when the transfiguration happened. But it happened at the top of the mountain. If you want to have transformation in your life, I'm here to tell you, don't, don't quit. Don't camp out, but keep climbing. Keep climbing. Because God has promised you something. And I promise you that if you're obedient and if you're willing, that He'll perform this promise in your life. And sometimes it's even greater than we could have ever imagined. See, God charged these men after they had, after they had been with Him for so long. One of the last things that Jesus told them in Mark 16 and 15 is to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He wanted them to keep climbing. He wanted them to keep pressing and pushing and try and reach as many people as they can. See, Jesus knew that he had a group of climbers. He had a group of people that were devoted and that were committed to doing his work. I ask you this morning, are you committed? Are you committed to doing the work of God? Are you committed to seeing God's promise alive in you? I want you to know that he's got so much more for us than we could ever imagine. Let's stand this morning. I'm going to ask our musicians to come. I'll tell you this. These people that are just high energy and driven and all those things, these climbers, that a lot of times they'll get to the top of that mountain but they won't stay there because they're looking for another challenge. They're looking for something else greater. And I want you to know that maybe you've been on the top of the mountain at some point in your life but maybe you've kind of stumbled that, back down the mountain and you're, you're in the valley right now. I want you to know there's nothing that says that you can't be back on the top of the mountain. But what I want to know is, are, are you willing to climb? Are you willing to do what it takes to pull yourself out from that valley? It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But I want you to know God's going to be there with you. He's going to be right there with you. I heard somebody tell a story one time, and this is a true story, that there was a gentleman that he tried to climb Mount Everest, and he failed. How many of y'all have failed before? He failed. So, he came back down, and he had to face some tough questions. Because he had told a lot of people that he was about to go climb this mountain. And when he was not successful, I can imagine that he was probably pretty embarrassed. But he said something so profound that you know what? It's encouragement to me. They asked him, they said, well, well you know, what are you going to do now? He said, I'm going to go climb, try and climb it again. They said, oh, really? He said, yeah. And they said, well, what do you think that's going to be like? And he said, well, he said, I'll tell you this. He said, it's going to be tough. He said, but I feel like I can do it. He said, because that mountain's as big as it's ever going to be. But God's still growing me. I'm still growing. I'm still in a development stage. I want you to know that mountain 
It might not be going anywhere, but it's the same size that it's always been. I want you to know that if you'll start that climb this morning, then you can achieve something great and you can get to the top of that mountain. I want to leave you with just a couple of verses here before we open up the altar. But Paul writes in Philippians. Now I want you to think about this for a second. Philippians was Paul writing from jail. I've never seen somebody so positive in prison as Paul, but he was. And he gave some encouraging words here. He said, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I want you to know this morning that even as we've been going through this message this morning, maybe you've been talking to yourself, well, I'm not strong enough or I'm not worthy enough because, you know, I, this happened to me years ago. I want you to know God's not concerned with your past. He's not concerned with it. He's concerned with right now and He's concerned with your future. And I want you to know that if you'll give yourself to Him, that, that that prize that's found in that upward call is waiting on you. He's wanting to know, will somebody come get it? Will somebody stand up, rise up, and say, you know what? I'm tired of being stuck here in this same old situation and how I'm about to go get what, what's mine. I'm going to take back what's been stolen from me or I'm going to go get what's been promised to me. It's just waiting on you. Are you willing to climb this morning? Let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you for your word. God, I pray that you just begin to, just as up that day of Pentecost, God, I pray that you begin to prick hearts in this place this morning. God, I pray that you would just begin to transform our minds and our hearts, dear Lord, so that we can receive a blessing from you this morning. God, I want to pray that you would just begin to take away any feeling of shame that's in this house this morning, any feeling of embarrassment. And God, I pray that you would just replace it with a sense of purpose. God, I pray that you would just give us that, that energy inside of us to rise up from within ourselves, dear Lord, and take back our lives, take back our families, and align ourselves back with you. God, I pray that you would just do a mighty work in this house this morning. God, give us the courage to, to take that first step out in faith and climb down to this altar and give it back to you, dear Lord. God, I thank you for what you're about to do in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. This altar's open, friend. If you'd like to come spend some time in prayer, we, we'd love to pray with you this morning.